proposed GST caravan has reached a critical stage. At the last GST council meeting, the honorable ministers from the state and the center, they finally evolved the consensus over the GST rate matrix. The one issue which is turning out to be the apple of discord is the cross empowerment. We have honorable finance minister of Jammu and Kashmir, Mr. Haseeb A. Drabu, today. Welcome, sir, to the Rubru program. And uh, sir, let me begin with uh, a small request to you so that our a good number of taxpayers, industry, trade, etc., the professionals, they have been very keen writing to us to find out how exactly the GST law is going to get extended to JNK and how this is going to work. Well, you see, JNK uh, is a special state uh, in terms of a number of things. Right, sir. Uh, primarily in this particular context, uh, we have our own constitution and the powers to tax while in other states are drawn from the uh, entry 7 of the constitution. Right, sir. In our case, we draw it from our own constitution. Right, sir. As a result of which, uh, JNK is the only state which has the power to levy a tax on services. Right, sir. So, while for other states, there is a certain barter that you will allow center to do some goods, but in the bargain, the states get a bit of service tax taxation. Right, sir. So, we'll have to evolve our own architecture. Right, sir. Of how we will participate in GST. I think uh, the view that is emerging and this is what in the morning I, I heard the Union Finance Minister also say that the government of JNK has to work out the modalities of how it would participate in GST. Right, sir. Uh, it is not so much an issue of extension of the law right. per se uh, as much it is uh, to have no dilution in the constitutional position of JNK. Right, sir. Uh, we have been working together with the Union Government to try and see what are the ways in which we would have a regime which is a tax regime which is modern, which is uh, has a lot of benefits yet right. uh, not really dilute the powers of the state government. Still. So, we are working towards uh, a model which should hopefully in the next month or so right, come to the Legislative Assembly of JNK I see, and sir. once it is passed then we will start working on how it works. So, there, there are different models on which uh, experts are No, it are will working. be the same generic model, same in, generic but model. it really is who would have the authority. So, you will see if you want to draw up from what you started off with right, sir. is the dual control model. Right, sir. So, perhaps what we are seeing is that the state of JNK will have a larger control. Right, sir. That's how it will work out. Right, so, sir. I mean, I mean, any any international model is available for working out some architecture. Yes, uh, there are a lot of models. I mean, dual models uh, in Brazil and other countries where the state right, has a certain uh, right, sir. larger role. So, which is some something that could perhaps be appropriate for JNK as well. Right, sir. Now, sir, this uh, this the most contentious issue is turning out to be so this cross empowerment. How exactly, sir? What what are the issues where you know? I mean, the GST worldwide, sir. In fact. Uh, is very uh, exchequer friendly worldwide because it it, it brings certainty, uh, the elements of certainty in revenue collection. So that is why most of the countries have switched over to GST. But at the same time, sir, so there there is some sort of turf war also. You know, on the, the collection machineries which are involved in this. So the, is it sir, the case the cross empowerment issue is stuck because of this? How do you look this at it? This is what sir? you know. Initially, my view, in fact, I spoke about it that it's not really sir. such a contentious issue. Right, sir. Um, we are today calling it cross empowerment. It started off with a more appropriate term called dual control. Dual control, right, sir. So, um, it has been jargonized into cross empowerment. Fundamentally, it is a turf battle. Right, sir. Between the union government and the state government. Right. So both have their tax administrations, both have quote unquote vested interests. Right, sir. And some states do apprehend that this could cause harassment. So, there is also a large dose of politics involved in this. Uh, there is also a large dose of administrative operational matters that right. you know, uh, central government may not be as familiar with the terrain of uh, or the landscape of business in various remote uh, right, parts of the country. And uh, these are very small businesses. So, would it in some way cause a certain harassment of the tax uh, taxpayer? Uh, plus, of course, I think also there is genuine uh, thing of controlling 
the tax regime. I think this draws from a certain history. Right, sir. There's a history of tax administration in India. True, sir. You don't want it to be coercive at that level. Redressals have to happen at the state level. So this seems like a far-fetched thing. I think people haven't understood yet. It'll take some time to understand the way GST would function because it is not, in my opinion, loss of sovereignty. It's a pooling of sovereignty. Yes. Sent has right, given up some control. States have given up some control. Absolutely, sir. Uh, ideally, uh, this should not have been such an issue. But given the nature of our businesses, right. given the way the existing tax division between centre and states, the federal system has evolved, it is becoming an issue. So, in some ways, one has to not think of it in the next four or five years, but think long term. And th there are good measures where one would, uh, this problem will not arise. Right, sir. Right. Sir. So, looking at sir, this, uh, apart from moving away from the dual control uh, issues, of course, that is going to be discussed at the next GST Council meeting. So, uh, apparently, you had coined a new terminology called, you know, the Federal um, the Revenue Collection Administration. So, how exactly, what is the thought process that we I think, have? You know, I think one needs to, to understand a couple of things which are very important. Over the last two, three years, sir, federalism has gained a certain momentum. I'm to be fair to the Union Finance Minister, both his budgets have been very, very federal. Right. Sir. First, by accepting the recommendations of the Finance 14th sir. Finance Commission. Right, sir. You have devolved more than 3 lakh crores to panchayats. So, there is yes, a huge sir. democratization of public expenditure in India. Right, sir. I see the GST Council as India's first federal institution. Right, sir. And if you want to go further, you need to actually nurture these institutions. Right, sir. Because this is how India will grow. Uh, we are a federal setup, but I think we don't have enough federal institutions. We have things like interstate council, again chaired by the uh, prime minister right. and the council cabinet and uh, union cabinet and chief ministers. But I think it met after 12 years last, last so, year. Sir. Yes, right. You sir. had NDC, which is virtually now defunct. So yes. what you're trying to see is a certain level of creating a new federal institution where all finance ministers yes, sir. Are of states are involved. I remember talking in 1991 that the entire macroeconomic regime of the country was changed. Right. Sir. Yet no state was involved. No state was involved. Absolutely. So this is a different experience. And yes, I, so I, one of the suggestions I thought was that we should look at a federal revenue administration. Right. Sir. In some ways, starting off with merging the two administrations and making them report to the GST Council. Right. Sir. Wonderful. Sir. So that you actually have so this whole dual control vanishes itself. Absolutely. And uh, you could conceive of a couple of these institutions. It will also reduce the burden of both governments Absolutely. in some way. Right, sir. I don't think you need the same number of people now under the GST regime that you would need under when you had to do so many taxations. Right, sir. So, and I think what is also not being adequately recognized when you're doing all this is that this is by and large a self-assessment model. Yes, sir. True. And technology plays a phenomenal role, role in, this. in this. Right. So you don't need the typical tax inspector kind of True. a person. Right. So I thought you could, you know, draw a parallel to the civil services. Right. So sir, uh, uh, now the fact that we are very close to uh, only one or two goalposts are left. One is of course the cross empowerment and then the model law. How exactly the JNK is gearing up to implement this GST, sir? What kind of preparation you are doing, sir? You see, I think the uh, the key is really the back end. Right. No matter what the front end of our GST structure will look, we will still have to do the training of the uh, stakeholders, right, sir. put in the IT enablement and infrastructure in place. I think that's what we are focusing on in terms of creating that infrastructure, right. enabling it for a certain year. I also feel that it's it's going to be a, a process that will evolve. You can't sleep in the VAT regime and wake up in the GST regime. It's Absolutely. not possible. So right. you will have, I think, a couple of years when you know you will try to firm up. But our focus really has been the backbone, the back end, not right. so much the uh, thing. We of course are participating to the best of our capabilities in designing of the national GST right. and uh, with some variants when it will apply to JNK, uh, it's, if it's passed by the assembly of JNK, then it becomes a law. But currently the focus is really creating the back end for this and 
uh, training of the various bat officials. Right, sir. So, at present, sir, what is the revenue collection for JNK, sir, as such? The total revenue collection, sir. See, we have a budget of about 60,000 crores. 60,000 crores, right, sir. And uh, we are looking at a revenue of, uh, in terms of uh, different uh, collections, we have about 12,000, 13,000 crores of Crore, right, sir. revenue in. Uh, what's called the state's own revenues oh. and then we have the devolved revenues from the center. Right, and so we're looking at about 20, 25,000 crores. So in, in a sense, let's say the VAT is about four and a half, five thousand 5,000 crores. Right, sir. Then you have the excise, three and a half, four thousand crores. Right, then we sir. have our octroids and stuff like that. Uh, we are not a very large uh, uh, revenue state. Right, we sir. are a consuming state, so presumably given the fact that it would benefit uh, our state. Right, sir, absolutely. Uh, we sir. have a very buoyant source of revenue right, sir. in uh, services right now. Services, right. Which sir. is about 13, 1400 crores. That, that's pretty good, sir. That's pretty good. But, sir, how exactly this uh, mm, the seamless flow of credit is going to work? I don't see that it, this will be a specific issue for JNK. That's right, a generic sir. issue all states will have. Uh, till we are able to build a robust base of dealers right, sir. and their interstate transactions and what kind of credits they get. So it's pure play technology issue and I think right, that is a genuine risk but as I said it's not going to be seamless, it's not going to be uh, so yeah, smooth from day one right, particularly because we are facing a very very hard deadline right, in sir. terms of April 1 right, sir. and in fact I think the whole thing is going to go live without actually a beta testing. So uh, these risks are there but I think those glitches will even out uh, as you go along. Our much much bigger issue Sir. for states like JNK and the northeastern states is what happens to the exemptions that are today granted. Right, sir. See, our entire industry that we have in JNK, or for that matter, that we have in the northeastern states, uh, maybe is industry. driven by exemptions. Absolutely, sir. Now, Absolutely. the moment you give an exemption, you break the chain, right, and sir. GST doesn't work. Right, sir. So, we have to work out right, sir. a certain model of exemptions, exemptions right, sir. Uh, both in while calculating what revenues we have because we have foregone revenues right, sir. plus also going forward. Right, so, we are working on a model of trying to give reimbursements right, sir, okay. rather than do exemptions. Exemption. So, it virtually is a zero coupon kind of a credit right, sir, which okay. then he gets it. So, once he pays and then it will revolve. Right, sir, okay. So, we are seeing how that will, I think that will be a challenge for northeastern states and us right, sir. to adjust that part of it in the basic software of the GST. Other than that, I don't see uh, JNK having a specific issue, a specific issue uh, right. or for that matter, Northeast having a specific issue. So, along the same lines, so this good number of states have been apparently granting uh, VAT subsidy to industry and trade. So, VAT subsidy is nothing but again the reimbursement model or maybe exemption model. So, you know, naturally, so the system which you are trying to work, probably that will be that will get extended to other states as well. Uh, quite possible because there are two. One is that you, you exempt. Right. Sir. Uh, second is you bring it to the budget right, and you sir. then do a reimbursement or a subsidy as you are saying. Okay, sir. Uh, yes, uh, it goes against the basic spirit of uh, GST, right, but sir. given the fact that we are in a position of uh, a certain disadvantage and there are both state exemptions and central exemptions right, sir. Uh, to promote industry and development in JNK and not just the states. I think some variant has to be has to be worked out, right, sir, and okay. uh, this can be done through the budgetary route, right, sir. So now the facts of this 24th to 25th the GST Council meeting is going to sir, pass the uh, approve the model GST law, sir, or it will be the first draft which is going to be discussed. And I think it will a considerable amount of work has has been done on it, but the first cut will come, and right, then sir, we'll okay. have some discussions on it. I think uh, there's an informal meeting on the 20th. Right, which sir. will try and resolve this whole issue of uh, dual control and cross empowerment. Right, sir. Oh, by then we'll also have some the first cut of the GST law, right, and sir. hopefully by the end of the month. I must tell you, it's been very enlightening to discuss these things. Every finance minister from states has uh, contributed to the discussions, and there has been a really a very very good environment in which these discussions have taken place. So I don't see any kind of uh, problems going forward in terms of the GST Council's own mandate. Right, and that is why the credit goes to rather the all the state finance minister and the Indian finance minister, because so far 
despite being vested with the power to cast yes. vote and all that's that right. that has not been resorted i think that's what i'm saying that that, that has it, it's it goes beyond the current thing because as i said it it really form the dna of the organization true sir and you will try and going forward 10 years from now uh, still try and you know keep up this whole process that let's not do things by vote right sir let's do it by consensus, consensus. and i mean no last question sir from my side will be sir that uh, the last gst council meeting the gst rates were finalized and of course from from center side there was a proposal to levy says finally the gst council has also approved so how did the entire thing was cleaned sir in fact over no i think i think ideally sir cess should not have been used for composition purposes very right. clearly it's right. not a uh, it's not a desirable thing right sir but then i think also state finance minister realized that it's not a center versus states center is under some stress right now they right. have also uh, done an open ended compensation for the next 5 years right where a center was going to come in from you see the right. moment you put a cess as mode of financing the rates go up right sir so it's neither in the inter center or the states but because the center has devolved so much 3 and a half lakh crores to panchayats right sir it is under some stress till the till effects of voting commission are worn out right sir. i think that's where the understanding was ideally it should have been funded from outside right uh, the thing but given the fact that this was done i think that's what the states really uh, showed certain majority of thought and agreed to cess funding the compensation of uh, states but i think there is also this uh, thing that there are when you look at it there are six rates cess right over time i think 12 and 18 will collapse into one rate right sir, absolutely 0 and 4 will collapse into one rate right. and you will have so you will have a genuine demerit rate of 28 plus plus then you have a normal rate of 14 and a half 15% and a lower rate of between 0 and 4% true sir so i think that's how it will morph so today it may look that you have six rates but essentially over time going forward these rates will as what is the key in my opinion which will have a huge impact on states plus the stakeholders plus inflation and some macro variables is which commodity goes where and right. that's my thought had been that please don't look at it that today we have a bunch of rates and now we'll fit them into, the, into these right. rates no right because you need to what was a luxury in 70 is not a luxury today true so let's not look at it let's use this opportunity right sir to create a tax structure that is in line with the social realities of india true sir the new Absolutely. india right mobile phone would have been an extreme luxury even in 90s yes when you were paying 80 rupees for a phone call yes sir today true. it's a necessity yes, you want to tax at 40% no so let's try and see the fitment right. i think that is the big task yes sir. more than cross empowerment yes. i would honestly focus on what is the fitment of commodities into these rate maps right, and sir. that is what is important wonderful sir i wish you all the best sir and thank you for talking to tlt sir